Welcome back to the Library Trust YouTube channel. In today's class, we'll be learning how to make this beautiful asymmetric neckline top with ruffles. Okay, so we'll use two nets for the ruffles, and I'll be taking us through how we are going to be cutting and creating these beautiful ruffles that we have here. The tutorial is very simple to make, and it is beginner friendly. To make this, I'll be using this bodies that I already drafted. So it's a full regular bodies, but this is like an asymmetric neckline. So we'll be modifying this to become an asymmetric, just like what we have here. And then for the ruffles, I'm going to be using this two net, this green two net for the ruffles. So the first thing you need to do now is to determine the side that you want this asymmetric neckline to be. So just like I have it on this, and you can see that it is a bit deep. You can see that the cleavage is showing, but this is actually not compulsory. It depends on how much you want yours to refill. So now I'm be choosing this side also. So from this side now, I'll be drafting an asymmetric neckline to meet the armhole of the other side. And to do this, I'm just going to be taking my curve driller. And like I said, depends on how low you want yours to be. But in my case, I don't want it too low. So from this neckline here, I'm just going to be using this curve to connect from this shoulder point. Sorry, from this shoulder point here, all the way to my arm hole. So in the case of this this tutorial that we are seeing, you can see that it is the connection is lower than the arm hole. You can see where it stops here. So if you want something like this, you can just take your tape through and measure like two inches. From your armhole point here, you can go lower by like two inches, which is here, and then you connect from that place to all the way to this place, if that is what you want. But if it is too revealing for you, you can just stop around your armhole area. So here, let me just go one inch below my armhole here, and then I'm going to connect from that point to this point now. So now I'm going to be ruling connecting it using my chalk then i'm going to bring in my scissors now and then i'll cut this out okay so here also if you want it lower you can determine how low you want it because this is not going to be too low so if i check this one now from the upper part here i have around 16 inches. so if you want it lower you can just even do this manually by going as low as possible then you connect it in bits so you can connect from your neckline up to this point and then from that point now you turn your your ruler again and then connect from there to where you want it to be so connecting like this now you can see how low and how revealing this is going to be so it's no longer going to come like this it's going to come like this so now i'm just going to cut this now and then i'll just play around it now and then cut in between this line okay so it's entirely dependent on you it depends on how low you are willing to go with this so we have our asymmetric neckline like this and the next thing now is to start cutting our ruffle part. So for the ruffle part now, it depends on how much ruffle. There are several ruffles you can work with. If you look at the ruffles that we have here, you can see that it is a bit bold. It's not too tiny. So for this now, it's around... So this is quite big. I can use like maybe 5 or 6 inches to cut out the ruffles. There are some ruffles that are not this big. Okay. Okay, like what we have here, you can see that we can barely see this. It's so close and so tiny. So for this now, I don't think this is more than two inches of ruffles gathered and it is very full. So this is fuller than what we have here. Okay, so you can see that you can see your ruffles clearly here as against what you have on the red dress. You can barely see the ruffles because the ruffles are cut into small, small pieces and they are so close together. So it's made this come out really, really full. So we'll be going with this now and the first thing I'm going to do is to arrange my two nets. So I have my two nets like this now. To arrange it, I'm just going to iron it. You're going to iron it first so that it will be neat and easier for you to work with. Then after ironing it, you're going to be folding it okay so i just cut a bit of the net because it's quite big so that we'll see how i'm going to arrange it so you iron it like i said and you arrange it very well you can see how flat it is looking and how neat so now you determine the length that you want for your for your ruffle so let's say you want to measure like a length of five inches 
what what this mean is that remember you are going to gather it at the midpoint you're going to run a loose stitch at the midpoint to create your ruffles so what this means by is that by the time you gather it at the midpoint of five inches which is two and a half inches what you will be the length you'll be left with on both sides of your ruffle is two and a half inches each so you just hold your tape now to have an idea of the length you're going to have so if this length is okay for you go with it but if it is too small you can try maybe seven inches so if you use a length of seven inches if you measure seven inches on your net it means three and a half by the time you run your stitch you have three three and a half inches on each side of your ruffles so here i think i'll just be working with five inches or five and a half inches so let's say i'm working with five and a half inches from my end points here i'm going to be measuring five and a half inches and then i'm going to make it into a straight line so when you're doing this you should be careful because two net is not that strong so that it doesn't shift okay but the the logic is that you should try and arrange it and have like different piles of net underneath it so that you can cut them all at once because it's not actually easy to be cutting them in bits like this but i just have to cut this small one so that we can understand what i'm doing and to be feasible so i have five and a half inches there from here also i'm going to measure and add that five and a half inches then after measuring it like that i'm going to cut it out then we'll go over to the machine to see how i'm going to be gathering this so i'm going to be gathering this actually without a a gather, gathering foot i'm going to be using my regular industrial machine to gather it so it's not all industrial machine that run gathers on two nets but i'm going to be teaching us the tip that i use to gather my nets using my regular industrial machine okay so now i have divided this into three now and what i'm going to do now is to simply cut this on this point okay so i've cut it now and then the first one remember i put it on fold so i'm just going to slash it open on the fold point here so i have four strips of net fabric now so the next thing for me now is to take it to my machine now to gather them one after the other so it depends on what you want you can this fabric is actually by 60 this net is by 60 okay so the length is 60 inches so you can actually take them now and then be joining them together so that you have one long strip but it may be tedious so i'm going to be teaching us how i join my my two nets together on my fabric okay you don't have to join them one after the other to form a long strip like this you can gather them separately and when you are attaching them to your your bodies you can join them in a way that it's not going to show so now we'll go over to the machine now and then we'll continue okay so before i go i just want to show us how i'm going to be uh, attaching these ruffles to it remember we've created an asymmetric neckline so before i had my ruffle at all i'm going to be leaving half inch for lining for turning for turning this so that it will be neatly finished on the neckline so i measure half inch round now and then i leave it then i'll start placing my ruffles following this asymmetric neckline that i have so depending on the fullness you want and how much net you need to work with you can measure like one one inch so let's assume this is going to be the first net layer so from there now you can measure like half inch or one inch round and then that's going to be the next point where you're going to be placing your ruffles you can see i'm measuring it you can actually eyeball this but if you know that you're not too sure so you can actually take your time to measure it so this is going to be the next layer where i'm going to be placing my ruffle so after that you can take your tape again and measure another one inch to create the third layer so that is how you're going to keep measuring it till you acquire the desired ruffle length that you want okay and i'm using a space of one inch in server you don't have to use one inch you can use half an inch you can even place them very close beside each other depending on um, the amount of fabric you have to work with and also your ruffle can run from the front all the way to the back like this if you have enough fabric but for the purpose of this tutorial i'll just be adding these ruffles at the front part of my bodies so now let's go to the machine now we're on the machine now 
and I'm going to be putting two layers of two together. So this is the first one, this is the second one. This just helps it to come out fuller. So you can use three or four layers or depending on the amount of fabric you have. So now I've set my machine to the lowest, loosest stitches. That's the, the number five on my industrial machine. So now I'm going to be placing this under my machine foot. So I'm just going to bring the thread to the back and then place this net under my machine foot. So you're going to be placing it in the middle, okay? At the midpoint of your of your net. That's where you're going to be placing your machine foot. So now this machine now is on the midpoint of the foot. I'm going to do a regular stitch so that we can see the difference between this. Then I'm going to use this method. So the method, what I'll just do is this thread on top of my machine. I'm just going to pull it a bit and then sew. So pulling it will help it to gather my two nets. But we're going to see the difference we're going to be having with I'm not pulling it and when I'm pulling it. So I'm just going to start with the one without the pull. So now I've put my machine. My machine is on now and then I'm going to sew. So now I'm not pulling the thread and you can see that even with the loosest stitch, this machine is set to the loosest stitch, you can see that it's not gathering anything for me. So now I'm going to try to pull the upper thread now. So pulling the upper thread, you will see how the effect is going to come out. So I'm just arranging my tool now and then I'm going to be pulling the thread. So pulling the thread now, you can see how my tool, you can see that it is gathering my tool for me already. So I'm just going to stop and then arrange my tool well. Then I'm going to continue again by pulling it on the other thread. And you can see this effect that this is giving me. You can see that it is gathering this tool for me. Okay, so you continue sewing it till you reach the end point. So when you reach the end point like this, you're going to bring it out. And when I bring it out, you can see the difference that when I started the sewing without pulling the thread, you can see that it just maintained a straight straight stitch here. And when I started pulling the thread upwards, you can see that it just gives me this little bit of ruffles at the gathered point. So now, after gathering it with your machine like this, if you are not okay with the gathering that you have, then you can just pick one thread out of the two thread that you you left and then you pull the thread to gather it to your desired effect okay so you keep gathering it so you have your desired fullness so another way you can gather your tool net without a gathering foot is by doing this manually so i'm going to pick another tool now and then use it to teach us how we're going to do this manually so to do this manually i'm going to be picking this tool and then i'll double it again just the same way i doubled it for the first one then in this case i'll be using my hand to gather it as i'm sewing so now i'm going to be placing this tool under my machine foot like this at the midpoint also and then you can you don't have to put your your setting on loose stitch on gather stitch this time around because you're going to be gathering it to your desired fullness so i'll put my machine on now and then with my hand i'm just going to be picking it now hold it with my hand and then sew on it so i'll stop again i'll arrange my two i'll pack the desired effect that i want and then i'm going to hold this together and then i'll sew on it again so you keep doing that till you reach the end point. You arrange it, you gather it with your hand. If you are okay with what you have, you hold it together and then you sew on it. See, you sew. Those are the ways. There are several ways you can actually gather your tool, but these are just some of the ways you can gather your tool manually without using a gathering foot. So now the next thing now is to, for us to start sewing this to our bodies so you can see the effect that i have with this so just give several methods trial so you just choose the method that works best for you okay so now i have my ruffles like this so i'm just going to be showing it off camera because this video is already very long but i'm going to show us what i'm going to do so now i have several of these ruffles 
now i'm going to bring my bodies and the lines that i already marked with my chalk i'll just place my ruffle on it now and then sew it at the midpoint like this okay so now because the way of because of the way i cut my ruffle is quite short so the next one instead of joining it like this i'm just going to be raising up the last one that i did i'll place this behind it and then i'm going to be placing the next one on it and then i'll continue my sewing like this so this way is not going to show that i did any joining around you can see that it's barely visible so for you to have a longer ruffle instead of folding your fabric by the amount of yardage amount of length like i did okay so remember this is a very long length and the length here is by 60. so instead of folding it and cutting it by the length you just fold it by the yard let's say you have four yards of fabric to work with so instead of folding it like this so that you cut it lengthwise you just fold it like this and then you cut it by the yard so with each ruffle you have four four yards of fabric i think that will give you a longer ruffle so now i'll take this to the sewing machine now and then i sew it so when i sew the first one you can see that the ruffle is quite wide so it's already covering the next one so when i want to place the next one what i'm going to do is i'm just going to shift this like this and then i'll place the next one underneath it so this next one is going to help it to stand instead of it to be lying flat like this by the time i open it up now and place the next one on it you can see that it's already standing on its own to give it that standing effect so now i'm going to go to the machine and do this now then bring it back to show us so i'm gonna have to sew them together now and we can see what we have so this is what we have and like i said before you start you have to leave half an inch on the upper part which is this this is what you use to turn with your lining so you cut your lining and sew the same way you sew your fabric and then you just sew it around the neckline like this and turn it so that it can have something neatly finished like this so after sewing your net if you see any part of your net that is poking out maybe you made a mistake or you did not get the center points well when you're gathering it so if you are seeing like different levels to your net at this point it is too possible for you to trim it so here what you just need to do now is to lay it flat and anyone that you notice that is poking out you can easily come in with your scissors now and then trim it off to level it so that everything will be on the level point but if you get your midpoint very well when you are gathering your ruffles you should not have this type of you have something uniform so now like i said because of the amount of net in front, like this is like around two years of two net okay what you're seeing here is around two years of two net so i just used it for the front part i did not add my two to the back part so now i'll take this to the mannequin now so that we'll see what this is looking like okay so this is what our ruffle is looking like on the mannequin and you can see just the way we drafted this because we redrafted this by going low at the center front here you can see that it is low also and exposing a little bit of the bust area so the half inch that you have here is what you use to turn it inside with your lining so that you have something neat at your neckline area and you can see the height that a five inches to net is giving us it's really beautiful so if you're doing yours for the for your clients you know that you have to take it all the way to the back but i'm just doing this for the purpose of the tutorial and this that you have just in front here took about two yards of two net but it's really beautiful and simple to make as we can see i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you enjoyed it let us know in the comment section like 